the ferocious fangs of the sabre cat. They've earned this prehistoric creature a fearsome reputation. In their time, sabre cats felled Ice Age America's lost giants. So why do Australian scientists now say the sabre cat had the bite of a pussycat? For well over 150 years now, there's been debates, sometimes quite heated, over the, the killing technique and the sort of feeding behaviours of this animal here, which is Smilodon fatalis, popularly known as the sabre-toothed tiger. Using innovative techniques, researchers at the University of New South Wales and Newcastle have tested the skull of a sabre cat. Our researchers demonstrated firstly that the sabre tooth had a relatively weak bite. It demonstrates that despite this, it could well have used its very powerful neck muscles to compensate to some degree for that. Further, our research is demonstrating that the sabre tooth would have had to have a very precise, specialised killing method. It was not able to resist wildly uh, changing uh, conditions in terms of the actual struggle with the prey. Now the animal we chose um, for comparison was an African lion. The arguments over feeding behaviour, killing behaviour in the sabre tooth, if they involved any kind of engineering based analyses at all, were essentially two dimensional. What we've done here in this research is make more realistic three dimensional models that basically capture the, the structure and the shape of the skull in much higher resolution and obviously in three dimensions. This has certainly not been done before. And the techniques that we're applying here are also, we think, quite groundbreaking. These sorts of techniques are readily transferable. The same protocols that we are applying here, we can apply to human skulls, or for that matter, um, any animal that, that has bones and muscles. And you know, there, there are a number of applications. In fact, we, we are working with, with dentists and safety scientists as well as surgeons at the moment.